Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look into Azure Quick Start templates. My name is Sushant Sutish and I'm going to be your trainer for this AZ303 certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Azure Quick Start templates are resource manager templates that are provided by the Azure community. Azure Quick Start templates are available on GitHub as well. So let me quickly show you where you can find them. Go to your browser and type in Azure Quick Start Templates. And usually the first result returns is for the Azure Quick Start Template. All right, so this is where you would be able to find different Quick Start Templates available on Azure. You can search for a specific templates on the search box. And once you find a template, you can select that. So this is an example of deploying a single Windows Virtual Machine on Azure. Once you're inside the template page, you can see different parameters, how to use this template, and what are the command lines you can use. You can straight away use to deploy this to Azure itself by clicking on Deploy to Azure. That asks you to sign in to your Azure portal. Once you provide the username and password, you would be able to log into the Azure portal. As soon as you do that, you can see that it straight away takes you to deploy a single virtual machine template wizard. Most of the details will be populated automatically. Depending on the template, you would be able to change some and not all. So in this template, all you have to provide is a resource group, the admin username and password, and then you can click on review and create. That basically deploys it for you. So you understand how easy to use a predefined template. The next option is you can browse this template on GitHub as well. So within this GitHub page, you can either deploy it to Azure. Cool thing is you can visualize the template. So click on visualize. This is where you would be able to see resources that make up the deployment, including a virtual machine, storage account, network resources. So below the visualization, you can click on JSON that define the resource as well. As you can see that this is the JSON template for that particular template. Now let's go ahead and learn how you can save a template for a virtual machine. So when you create a virtual machine in Azure using Portal or PowerShell, a resource manager template is automatically created for you. And you can use this template to quickly duplicate a deployment. So I'm going to go back to my Azure portal. Right now I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to go back to a virtual machine, select an existing virtual machine. So under the virtual machine, if you scroll down, previously the settings was under the settings and be below the locks. Now, if you scroll down, you would be able to find the export template under automation. As you can see that you can see the template over here. You can click on the download button to save the template on your local computer. Once you open the zip file, you can see there are two files. One is parameters.json, another one is another one is template.json. Now let's look into how you can configure a virtual hard disk template. First, what is an Azure virtual hard disk? A virtual machine can contain multiple hard disks. So let me show you where you can find the hard disk. Once you're inside the virtual machine, you can go to click on disk. This tells you how many disks you have attached to that virtual machine. Typically, a virtual machine has an operating system VHD on which the operating system is installed. It also has one or more data VHDs that contain the applications and other user-specific data used by the virtual machine. The difference between a VHD and a physical hard disk is that a VHD is stored as a virtual file in Azure. It isn't a piece of physical hardware. Now let's understand what is a virtual machine image. Azure Marketplace supplies many virtual machine images that you can use as a starting point for your own systems. You would be able to find various versions of Windows Server, optionally with SQL Server installed, or Linux variants of software such as MySQL, MongoDB, Cassandra, and other databases, which are already configured. And what is a generalized image? You can create your own custom virtual image in one or two ways. First one is, if you are building an image from scratch by using Hyper-V, you can create a blank virtual disk and then create a virtual machine with the disk. Second option is, 
if you are customizing an image from Azure Marketplace, you build a virtual machine by using an existing image. So after you build and customize virtual machine, you can save the new image as set of PhDs. And finally, what is a specialized virtual image? A specialized virtual image is a copy of a live virtual machine after it has reached a specific state. For example, a specialized image might contain a copy of the configured operating system, software, user accounts, databases, connection information, and other data for your system. You can use a specialized virtual image as a backup for your system at a particular point in time. And if you need to recover after a catastrophic failure or you need to roll back the virtual machine, you can restore your virtual machine from this image as well. Now let me show you how you can create a VM from a VHD. I'm on my Azure portal. I'm gonna go back to my virtual machine. Right on top, you can find capture. So after you have generalized the virtual machine, you can create an image. The image will include all the disk associated with the virtual machine. And you can create an image from the generalized virtual machine by using the Azure portal, the Azure CLI, or the PowerShell. So on the create image page that follows, give your image a name and specify a resource group in which you want to store the image. And you can optionally remove the virtual machine after the image is created. Now let's look into run books in Azure Automation. Process automation in Azure Automation allows you to create and manage PowerShell, PowerShell workflow, and graphical runbooks. Automation executes your runbooks based on the logic defined inside them. If a runbook is interrupted, it restarts at the beginning. Starting a runbook in Azure Automation creates a job, which is a single execution instance of a runbook. And each job accesses Azure resources by making a connection to your Azure subscription. The job can only access resources in your data center if those resources are accessible from the public cloud. This is an example diagram shows the life cycle of a runbook job for PowerShell runbooks, PowerShell workflow runbooks, and graphical runbooks. That concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we are going to learn about Azure Role-Based Access Control. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.